What's up YouTube? It's Tanner with Built Not Bought and today we're going to add on to our fireplace wall this section right behind me. Uh, we would like to put up a few floating shelves and we're going to kind of stagger them as they go down. Uh, Bree wanted three of them and they're going to be all out of walnut. And my plan is to make the shelves and then rip them in half and then mount the part that I cut to the wall, put my dominoes in and then just slide the shelf on. And then we might have to add a set screw or two in there. But we're going to start up towards the top and like I mentioned earlier, we're going to kind of stagger them as we go down. So here you can see kind of a blank slate that we wanted to spice up a little bit with some walnut. And I actually was able to go out into my shop and I found three cutoff pieces of walnut from previous projects. And I just measured the length on all of them and cut them all to the same length, which I believe was about 18 inches. And then the spacing between each shelf was going to be 16 inches. So what I'm going to do is simply set up my track saw and rip these uh, so that they're all approximately eight inches wide, which is how wide our fireplace wall sticks away from the wall. So they'll be kind of flush with that. I'm using my Festool track saw here. I've had this for about a year now and I use it on almost every single project. I absolutely love the saw. The blade is getting very dull. So I ended up taking four separate passes here to get through this walnut. Uh, which I'll just show you one pass here, but essentially you make your mark on each side, set up your clamps, and then you rip it and you're left with a nice clean cut. After cutting all of these, I went ahead and put them on my jointer to help make that uh, gap a little bit cleaner. And then up next is some sanding. I also have a Rotex ES sander, which I love. Uh, equally as much as my track saw. I started with 80 grit, which is a little aggressive, but I needed to get all of this old bark off of here. I used the chisel to get the bulk of the bark off, and then there's a little bit of that residue left over afterwards. So 80 grit works really well for that. And it also helps get rid of any marks left behind by my uh, thickness planer as well. I followed up the 80 grit sandpaper with 120, which is what I finished with on this project. For shelves and similar projects like this, I think 120 is more than adequate. Uh, on tabletops, I like to go up to 150 in some cases to get a little bit smoother. So up next, I'm just going to rip a section that I'm going to actually screw onto the wall. So I head over to my table saw, set it at one and a half inches on the dot, and I rip every one of these shelves. After I'm done ripping them, I'm going to go ahead and mark them off and then set up my dominoes. And the dominoes are going to be what actually hold these shelves to the wall. It's a great idea to check for square before firing up the table saw. It only takes a couple seconds and then, you're, then you know for sure that you have 90 degree cuts every time. I really started to notice with this project that I have several blades that either need to get resharpened or replaced. If you have any blades that you really love for all purpose, uh, let me know in the comments below. I need one for my track saw and my table saw here. But I'm going ahead and ripping that one and a half inch piece. And then I checked my fit here and realized that I'm definitely going to run these through the jointer and make sure that I have a much cleaner gap than what I currently have. And I'm really glad that I did that because in the end, I pretty much achieved a seamless gap. Having a dialed in jointer is one of the most satisfying things in the wood shop. Here you can see that line from where I just cut it and that is just not quite accurate enough for me. So I ran it through my grizzly jointer and look at this seam afterwards. Pretty much invisible, uh, which is one of my favorite parts about milling lumber is getting everything as dialed in as you possibly can. Up next, I was just marking off where my dominoes need to go. I ended up using three dominoes for each shelf on these. All right, so now I'm gonna take my domino and punch in mortises on both the shelf and the wall mount. And then once I'm ready to mount these on the wall, I'm gonna flip this so that I have the inside facing me and I'm gonna pre-drill and countersink wherever my studs are and then screw this solid uh, to the wall or to the studs and then I'll have my dominoes of course sticking out and then I'll just be able to slide this shelf right onto those dominoes and probably run one set screw up into one of the dominoes. I'm going to punch all these into all three shelves and then I'll update you. 
here I'm just gluing in all of my dominoes and I want to say before I get a bunch of comments, uh, the Festool domino is an expensive tool and you can do this without one with a dowel jig for much cheaper and the setup is exactly the same. You just mount or mark out your dowel holes and then add a little glue to one side and use a little bit of a thicker dowel to hold a little bit more weight on your shelf. I have a domino, so I'm gonna use it every single time. All right, so you're gonna make sure that you find your studs in your wall. You do not want to mount any shelving just to the drywall or anything for that matter. So I have all my studs marked off here with a piece of tape and then you won't be able to see it on camera, but I put a little mark where the center of each stud is. So then I'm gonna take my laser and when we figure out the height of each shelf, I'm gonna set my laser so that it makes an X and it follows those studs. So I know exactly where to put my shelf. And then I'm gonna hold the piece of the shelf that's gonna be attached to the wall right up to that laser mark and then mark where my holes need to be drilled into that. And I'll pre-drill through the piece that goes to the wall exactly where those studs are so that when I go to screw this onto the wall, I'm hitting dead center and all the studs. Might sound a little bit confusing, but I think it'll make more sense as I go. Okay, so I have my laser right on this middle stud. And then I have this line where the bottom of the top shelf is gonna go. And the top shelf is going to come out from this wall. And then the second one is gonna come out from about down here. And then the third one is gonna be right about where those tape lines are. And our spacing in between each shelf is going to be 16 inches. Here, But I took my drill and I pre-drilled right here where that vertical stud is gonna be and then over on this side of my domino where this vertical stud is gonna be. And I can take this down and work on it uh, off of the ladder. And here you can see my little marks where I pre-drilled. Now I'm gonna finish pre-drilling all the way through this and then I'm gonna countersink so that the head of my screw sits below the surface of this lumber. So I know my ladder is kind of in the way here, but I put two three inch screws. Uh, that gave me a little over an inch of actual screw into the stud. And I've got that mounted and it's super solid. And now it's just a matter of slipping the actual shelf over those dominoes and securing it in place. It can be a little tricky, especially when you're working up on a ladder like this, but you just basically have to line up one side and then I just use my hand to kind of pop it into place. And then I just worked my way across the middle and then the far edge. And in the end, I was really happy with how snug these fit and I didn't even use a set screw for this. Okay, so I just smacked that one into place. I don't even know if I need to add a set screw because that is a snug fit and that thing is not coming off of there. Um, but yeah, I think it looks good so far. One thing that I forgot to mention, if you're going to do this project, there's a couple tools that you need to make sure you have on hand. A can of Rotel and then a random box that gets you the exact spacing desired between the shelf. Bingo, 16 inches right on the dot. So the next shelf is actually going to go from the fireplace over and then the third one will be back over to this wall so it's kind of staggered as we go down. Alright so now I'm going to melt that last one and this one I can kind of give you the best camera angle and get the ladder out of the way. So my screw heads are below the surface, they're not in the way so this can sit flush. This thing is solid because we hit studs in two places and then we're just going to line up our dominoes. go and they're pretty solid I mean I wouldn't put like over 50 pounds on them but just for decorations and stuff they'll work really great so here's the space all finished up I've got all the shelves installed and we also 
got some decorations up. I should say my wife got some decorations up. And we really like how this brings this space all together. Uh, we have a couple other things we want to do here before it's all done, uh, including putting on some baseboard trim underneath the bench. And we've been throwing around maybe doing something on this wall, something simple. So if you have any ideas, let us know. But we're really, really happy with how this is turning out. episode and I really appreciate everybody that has liked and subscribed. It means a lot to me and my family. Stay tuned for an upper cabinet video that I have in the works. We've just been waiting on one handle to come in the mail and I'll have all of those finished up as well as a really cool walnut council table. Thanks for watching.